Bray Wyatt versus Chris Jericho at SummerSlam 2014 honestly is the one stinker of a match on the card. Uh, I really it was one of those people that was really surprised by Chris Jericho coming back, um, but by him coming back and, and um, you know basically Bray Wyatt interrupting um, Chris Jericho and inserting himself into a feud, I didn't really understand what was going on. I, I was very vocal during the whole John Cena feud that I was hoping that Bray Wyatt would get the win at WrestleMania, and that um, by him not getting it, I didn't know really what they were going to be doing with Bray Wyatt from here on out. I heard one of the best sort of... Uh, stories on why WWE asked Chris Jericho to come back and why they asked him to put him in the feud with Bray Wyatt was that basically, for a good matter of the John Cena feud, the fans themselves were turning Bray Wyatt heel. WWE can go either way with Bray, but they really see him as a long-term heel for the company. And, you know, you know, if they put him in there against any nonchalant side of guy, the fans who like Bray Wyatt are going to win over the crowds to cheer for this guy. Now, WWE knew that sitting on the sidelines was Chris Jericho, and they called Chris Jericho to bring him back for the one reason is it doesn't matter if Chris Jericho is trying to be the most dastardly heel on the um, on the roster or if he's trying to be the biggest baby face on the whole deal is that the crowd is going to cheer Chris Jericho. He's always going to get a pop every time he comes out. People are always going to be you know, on their seat during all of his matches. That is why they brought him back. If that's true, I don't know. I heard it on a wrestling podcast, and it made sense, and it clicked with me. So I said, hey, it sounds good enough to mention in one of my videos. Now, what we've seen is that in all these uh, you know, Chris Jericho matches, that the Wyatts interfere. You know, and Jericho is one of those guys. Is he's going to fight if he has to fight, and he's taking the fight to three guys, and he's not big enough or bad enough in order to fight off three guys. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, Jericho has a chance to win. As we saw, and we're all surprised, the battleground is when Jericho, you know, picked up the win uh, against Bray Wyatt. I thought he was going to be booked much like the Rob Van Dam, where he just um, couldn't get a win to save his life. I even said that Van Dam would probably, you know, be in the back complaining to Triple H and Vince about, you know, what they're doing with him and where they're going. And here, because of an injury, we haven't seen Rob Van Dam wrestle since Battleground. So I'm crossing my fingers that Rob didn't see my uh, video. And now he is, you know, putting in his formal complaint and, and pulling a CM Punk and going home. Um, but I think there's people who's actually going to take me serious in what I just said. Um, but because of uh, the matches on Monday Night Raw and on SmackDown, Chris Jericho was able to defeat Luke Harper and Eric Rowan in singles matches. And now due to that, it is going to be a singles match. Uh, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan are going to be banned uh, from being at ringside. Uh, they're not going to be able to uh, run down and try and interfere in this match. Um, basically, you know, it's just going to be one-on-one um, -on -one and all hands off from here. Chris Jericho has said that he wouldn't be surprised if... Uh, holograms appear in the ring and Luke Harper and Eric Rowan still try and fight off uh, Chris Jericho from beating um, uh, Bray Wyatt. But honestly, when it comes down to it, this feud has bo bored me most because I don't understand Bray Wyatt. He sits back and he has these long promos and in each promo he will say something in the right tone of voice that makes everybody get creeped out or, you know, get somebody to cheer for him, like, save us, Chris Jericho, and, um, I don't get it, it just, I, I don't know, like, he just talks for a long time in that one voice, and I'm trying to figure it out, I'm trying to figure out if maybe he's speaking in riddles, is he speaking where you're supposed to, you know, try to de decipher a code in what's going on, but, um, he's a guy that just doesn't click with me, he came in with a whole bunch of fanfare, he was in that awesome match of, uh, the Ring of Fire match, against Kane last year, and to me, since then, it just really hasn't gone down the right path. You know, we've seen him do battles with uh, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, and, um, of course, the fights with The Shield was really good, but those were just awesome, real wrestling matches. They didn't have a whole bunch of storyline. There was just two groups of three guys in there that were going to go in there, and they were going to beat the holy hell out of each other and see where all the chips fell from there. Uh, of course, the Wyatts got the better of The Shield uh, in those matches, and um, uh, I think everybody is, is hoping for a Shield reunion and for the Wyatts to stay intact someday to see more of those matches because we didn't get a real big one. You know, you know, slap these guys in the elimination chamber itself and see what happens. Throw them in a steel cage and beat the hell out of each other like a war game style of match. Um, I, I think that's what they were looking for with these Wyatts, you know, when they were really going strong and they were beating the hell out of each other. But 
Honestly, I think that this is probably going to be a three-match series. Hopefully, Bray Wyatt will get the win in this one to even it out. He said that he was uh, at Battleground. He lost the match, but he's looking to win the war over a period of time. And winning, and losing the one match isn't the end of the world for him. So, here we go from here. Uh, Bray Wyatt for the win. And uh, I'm hoping for something. I'm not sure what we'll get, but I'm hoping for something good.